Everybody can talk. If you like to talk, then go ahead and talk. We're recording live. We're recording live. <laughs> Clap your hands if you're ready to party. Clap your hands if you're ready to go. Clap your hand if you're ready to party. Clap your hand if you already know. <laughs> Rapping is hard to do. And it's even harder to do in a character chair. The chair is squeaky. I don't know if it's picking it up, but it might be. All this is going to get cut. <laughs> or will it? Hey, you hear that laugh? Guess who's back, man? <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> JR is back, everybody. What's up, dog? Where the hell have you been? And the we, the people want to know. <laughs> JR, John. So JR was gone for the last couple episodes. I think he thought I cut him out. <laughs> like this guy went on a vacation for a minute and then he was nowhere to be found. No, we were we were talking and he went on a trip with his girlfriend and then uh he came back, but I had recorded a couple episodes. <laughs> and he goes, Hey man, what's up? <laughs> oh man, we would never cut JR out, dude. No, but he's back. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good, dude. My whole family caught the, the vid. I had told people that you got busted uh, <laughs> rushing the Capitol. <laughs> right? So you're back out. The whole family. But is the whole family okay? They're good, bro. They're good. I think our, our genetics are pretty good because we only had my Everybody had mild symptoms. Just the, the, the taste and uh, the smell. Oh, yeah? This is the worst. My aunt, my cousins were saying that shit was the worst. I thought you were saying they smell bad. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by six-year-olds. I can't see you, dude. Yeah, you put the camera here. You're the one. Dude, I came to the I came to the new studio. There's no new me, studio. No, no, no. That's what you told me over the phone or through text. You're like, hey, bro, the studio, though, dog, is hooked up. I walk in. It's the same fucking studio. What do you want from me, man? We don't have budgets. <laughs> and then all you did was put the camera right in front of my face. No, you could scoot over, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. But no. All right, guys. Well, this will be the last week JR's uh, be on the podcast. <laughs> Got the coffee going on now, man. Last time I taught you guys how to make kombucha, homemade kombucha. Today I was making coffee, and then JR chimes in and says, I'm not doing it right. So what I do is I have a pour over coffee method, okay? A pour over technique. I use a little setup like this. Okay, it's a Bodum pour over. So it's got a little, it's got the uh, little coffee filter, uh, a metal one, right? And then it goes into a bowl um, that you drip the water into, right? I need to explain this better. <laughs> Fuck, Chuck. Fuck. If you're watching, because I'm thinking, if you're watching, you can see what I'm talking about. If not, it's a little V-shape. It's the actual filter. It's a metal filter. Then inside of that filter, you got to put a paper filter. And then you pour the coffee. And then you put that over the little fishbowl looking thing, right? And then you pour the hot water over that. So essentially, the hot water is passing through the, uh, the coffee grounds. And I find that that is a good tasting coffee. I like a place, it's called Phil's Coffee. They do it that way. That's where I saw it. So I'm like, let me try it. And, and it's pretty good, but it takes some skill. It's not one that you just do and you set it and forget it. It's an actual skilly one. You got to have skills for this one, right? So you can burn the coffee easily. If you go over 205, JR says 210 or something. But I, I think when I looked it up online, it said if you keep the, the water temperature at about 205 to 295, you're going to make some decent coffee in the pour over technique. Now, this fucking guy says he's it, it, it's 210. He likes to heat it up to 210 and then and then take his time pouring the water <laughs> so that by the time he pours the water, it's at 205. That was his theory. He's like, yeah, I like to heat it up to 210 and it bings and I forget it and it turns off. And then, hold on, let me finish. <laughs> and then... I walk around the house a little bit, so now it's about 205. So then there you go. You agree with me that it's 205 is the temperature you need for the coffee to be good. 205. Hot water at 205 over the coffee, and then you got good coffee. All right? Then he told me you take the filter out right away. After you're done, you take the filter out. He made up something. He goes, the bitterness comes down from the grains. 
<laughs> you did say that, Juan no, Valdez. You Juan me. Valdez, and she goes, look, dude, the coffee comes down and then like he's a fucking descendant of Juan Valdez. <laughs> First of all, you said I, he said the coffee gets bitter it's because true. it's fucking well, it makes it. And I made up something. I'll do this a lot. I don't know if you guys are like me. I'll do this a lot when I'm like somebody's trying to tell me something, and then I'll go okay, and I'll, and I'll talk myself into their idea, whatever it is. Like, whoa, well, that guess that could that could be the case. So in my mind, I saw the steam of the hot water going up and hitting the old coffee that's bitter and then dripping down again, bitter coffee. I made that up in my head. <laughs> Is that how it works? I don't know. Yeah. I, I made the connections. Look, first of all, thank you for giving me that coffee as a gift that uh, whatever it's called. Because you gave it to me for my birthday. Oh, I got you a, I got you you got a coffee to, maker. There you, you go. You okay. Got, no, you got me the exact same thing that you had. So let me get this straight. But I Guys, hold on. <laughs> oh, stop, stop. So the fucking te- the, the student becomes the master? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes. I forgot I got him the fucking thing. And now he's at my house critiquing my technique. I mean, the audacity of one human being. I, I'm pouring the coffee fine. I've been making coffee. I made coffee. He, as a matter of fact, like the coffee I made. And that's why I was like, let me get, if he likes it, let's get it. Let's have it. Let's have him make it at his own house. He can make it at his own house now because he likes it. So I taught him how to make it. And then he has the fucking balls to come back here and tell me a higher temperature. And get you need it. a gooseneck. That I agree with. <laughs> this motherfucker. So. I get him the coffee maker. Now he gets himself a gooseneck and brags that I don't have one. <laughs> get me the gooseneck. <laughs> <laughs> How was your Valentine's Day, man? It was chill. Nothing crazy. I went to uh, Granville. Granville is what? <clears throat> it's a scratch kitchen. There's one in. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever JR does shit and he always. <laughs> I don't know why he always has the air of sophistication on it. (laughs) It's a scratch kitchen, the guy just told me. Well, no, I was going to explain to you what it was. You asked me what it was. Go ahead. Go ahead. I cut you off. It's a scratch kitchen. They're located. They have a Burbank location. They have a Santa Monica location. They also have a Studio City location. And they opened up outside dining. I like to go there. You know what I mean? They have a really nice menu. Not overpriced. Just enough. You know, I had, a, I had a great time. There was not a lot of people there. People still weren't coming out. You didn't say at all what the restaurant is, what it's like. Oh, so you don't Oh, so you don't know what a scratch kitchen is. Oh, is a scratch kitchen from scratch? Yeah, so they make everything from scratch. The bread from scratch. Okay. They made ev- everything in-house. That's basically what a scratch kitchen is. Ketchup, they'll make their own. They make their own. They make their own uh, Caesar salad. They have the, the Caesar. Oof, bomb. Oh, so, you, yeah, I get it now. So it's scratch kitchen. Okay. They have really good wine selection. So. so it was a good place, and you took your girl there? Yeah. She liked it? Yeah, she, that's our fucking thing, bro. That's the only one I go to. Ground barrel. What'd you do for Valentine's Day? Oh, thank God. I know I know you wanted me to say that, so that's the only reason you asked me, you dick. That wasn't even listening. <laughs> what did I do for Valentine's Day? Oh, Sarah and I did a, what did we do? We just cooked at the house? Yeah, I made a tri-tip for uh, Valentine's Day with some vegetable rice. Like, I cut up all these, like, mushrooms and tomatoes and, um, like, a little bit of onion and mixed it with this brown rice. Turns out pretty good with some sun-dried tomatoes and then uh, a little bit of tri-tip. Cut that bitch up and then had a little, uh, that was our little uh, Valentine's dinner. We didn't go anywhere. Nice. But we just got back. Uh, we went to Texas. Texas. Texas or Texas. We went to uh, Texas to visit my aunt and my cousins. Yeah, you took a road trip, huh? In the car I got for $1,000. Dude, we went all the way to Texas in that car. Bought the car for 1000 bucks. You guys heard about it on a previous podcast. $1,000. Car runs like a freaking dream. We put some miles on that bitch, and it drove us there. It was perfect, dude. Smooth. I maybe put a couple quarts of oil in there because, you know, older engine burns a little bit of oil. Yeah. That was it, dude. We were smooth sailing. Tires were great. The fluids were good. I put a little bit of, uh, what do you call it, too? A little bit of, uh, it loses a little bit every, like, 3,000 miles. Coolant? To, yeah, a little bit of coolant. So we had to put a little bit of coolant, but that's it, dude. And it got us to Texas perfectly. 
We had a great time, man. There's not much to see from here to Houston. All right? There isn't that much. When you're in L.A. to Houston, you jump on the 10 and ride that bitch out. It changes a little bit in Arizona, it's super desert, and then you get into Texas, and it's like New Mexico and Texas. It's the same thing. You can't even tell, dude. And at night, the stars are so clear yeah. on the open stretch of the 10. And you just, dude, you could see for miles, it feels like, right? That's crazy. I mean, like, you can see so far, and then you look up, and it's crystal clear. It was magical, man. It took us two days. On the way there, we stopped in Las Cruces, New Mexico. But on the way home, we just were like, dude, let's try to get far in as possible the first day. Mm -hmm. So then the second day, we can kind of take our time and cruise in. So we stopped in um, Tucson, oh, nice. in Texas, I mean, in Arizona. Arizona. So it took us like a few hours and to get home. You guys home. just missed the storm. Dude, we left and then the storm hit. <sighs> so we left Texas and then I felt so bad. My aunt and my cousins, they were like in the freezing fucking cold, dude. They're like, our house is so cold. Dude, people were dying. Because they were going in their cars and turning the car on and then to get warm. And then they were dying from the CO2 in the garage. Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah. It's crazy. And then they had the, the barbecue companies I heard had to remind people like, dude, don't bring your barbecue inside the house. Because people had no way to heat, them, heat themselves up. Do you think it's like an easy no-brainer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, some people just. There's a few, uh, a few like articles about like people that own Teslas. Because there's a safe power mode. Yeah. So it keeps the car warm and like all the other functions, but it doesn't drain the battery. So they were sleeping in their Teslas. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What a commercial for Tesla. Yeah. Power outage, get a Tesla. Meanwhile, Ted Cruz is on his way to fucking Cancun. <laughs> that was dope, dude. Ted Cruz dips out to Cancun. What a guy. <laughs> and there's like pictures of him. Like, dude, he's, he has no shame. He's like literally, I mean, how unaware do you have to be to get on a flight with your and your Ted fucking Cruz, dude? You're not Josh Alexander. You're asking who that is exactly. <laughs> it's fucking Ted Cruz, the senator. This and he's on. He's there with his his roll on luggage on the plane, bro. <laughs> Did you see what he said? What he said afterwards? He goes, "I'm being a good dad, getting on a flight back home." So so he tried to play it off like he. Flew them over there and then flew back. People are dying in their fucking houses because of barbecues. I would forgive him if he just sent his family and he stayed. Well, he, he stayed. should have. Why? Why? He was full of shit. He's not coming. He wasn't going there to fucking chaperone the flight. Yeah. Get out of town, bro. Which he tried to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're, you know, in charge of the fucking state, bro, you better hang out. Yeah. When the shit hits the fan. It's like the captain. It's like when the fucking president's golfing when there's like a disaster. How who the fuck is there the people's PR that tells them to go it's okay to go golfing? I guess Trump, it didn't matter. He would just go whenever he wanted. Like a regular person, if they could get the fuck out of Texas and go to Cancun, I'm a hundred percent for it. Yeah, if you're it, a fucking regular person, but if you're in charge of the fucking state. That's kinda of, that's kind of a pimp move though, in a way. This fool thought he was gonna get away with it. <laughs> what was he thinking, too? And he put his mask up for the first time all high? Motherfucker <laughs> never wears a mask. All of a sudden, he's going to Cancun, and the mask is up to here, dude. He's trying to blend in Barry over there, bro. He's just blending in, dude. He's like, nee, nee, nee. nothing to see here. It's not that gross escaping Texas. Because <laughs> the weather got bad. If it's too cold, get out of the kitchen, Ted. <laughs> Bill and Ted's excellent escape. <laughs> What a guy, dude. Oh, <laughs> unreal. Unreal. Politics is so stupid, dude. It's so dumb. Politics is the dumbest thing on the planet, man. It's all everyone's so corrupt and then they got to act like they're they're not the guy that they are. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's bullshit. It, the hypocrisy in our politics is so dumb. I'd rather them just be straight up fucking scumbags and tell you. Yeah. That's why I guess people like Trump though cuz he would just be like it is what it is. <laughs> You're like, dude, that can't be real. <laughs> and it was real. Um, I was at, I went to the grocery store the other day and I'm looking for, I forget what I was looking for. Oh, band-aids. I was looking for band-aids and I see this guy that looks like he works there. It, it's this dude with a, with the, he's wearing an apron. So yeah. I'm like, Hey man, uh, do you know where the band-aids are? And he kind of takes a beat and he goes, uh, I have 14. 
And I go, cool. And I'm at like aisle one. And I've already gone two or three times back and forth. So I was like in yeah. a hurry. And then I go, hey, man. And he goes, yeah. He goes, yeah, aisle 14. And I go to aisle 14. Dude, it's not even close to what it's just completely other. It's like fucking pancake mix, dude. The farthest thing from Band-Aids is that's what 14, aisle 14 was. And then I, I was like, I was kind of pissed. Because I'd already, you know, ran back and forth a couple times. And, I, and and we were at the aisle, basically. Where I asked him was pretty much the Band-Aid aisle. You could have just been like, oh, right here. Then I realized, oh, man, this guy doesn't even work there. <laughs> I saw the motherfucker checking out. You know? I saw him then when I went to go get my stuff. I see the guy checking <laughs> out. <laughs> and then I was like, I can't even be mad. Because that's fucking awesome, dude. He just, the guy just told me. 14 and he just sent me on a fucking fool's errand a wild goose chase if you will and 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 that's one of those moments normally i would get upset i was laughing dude i was like that's that's great he could easily been like hey man i don't work here but he took the initiative to be like you know what fuck this guy <laughs> aisle 14 and it, and it was like Dude, employees at stores like that, though, because he was so nonchalant and so careless about it that I was like, oh, this is how, how it is. Yeah. And um, I always thought that would be hard to do, like, know where every... How do they know that? But it's like, dude, after a while, you know, like, oh, this is yeah. what's in this aisle. You, you get it. And he just did the right amount of time, which is what was perfect for him. He was like a good actor in that way. Like, <laughs> he did the exact amount of time. <laughs> but, dude, what I fucking absolutely hate in a store, like, speaking of, like, store employees and stuff, like, if you go to Best Buy... And you're going to get a wire, a cable for your iPhone or some shit. And you go, hey, hey, man, like you see that there's two different ones. And yeah. me, I get analysis paralysis, bro. Like if there's more than one option, that's why I like Trader Joe's. They only have two options of anything. You go to Trader Joe's, there isn't 85 different mushrooms you can get. There's like three. And that helps me out because I go, okay, process of elimination. I try maybe one of the three every time. Then I know which one I like. Right? But you go to Best Buy, you want to buy a fucking iPhone cord. There's 75 of them. Now I don't know which one does what. Is this one better? Is that one better a little bit? I'm sick. <laughs> yeah. You know, I get so like, and so I'll ask, and I don't know why I do it. I don't know why the fuck I ask. <laughs> I'll ask an employee. I'll grab the boxes and I'll be like, hey man, what's the difference between this and this? Are you in this department? Are you in the department? Are you in this department? And the guy goes, yeah, it's my department. What's the difference between this one and this one? Oh, well, let me. Let me see. Um, <laughs> and he starts reading the book. Dude, like, I can't fucking see the same <laughs> shit. He goes, oh, yeah, this one has, like, the extended battery life. <laughs> and the other one has the same shit. And then he goes, oh, oh, this one has that, too. Um, and then he starts, like, I can't do the same thing, dude. It's not like back in the day. No bro. one cares. Nobody gives a shit at their job when they work at a retail store like that. That's not true. And I hate to say this, but if they're in the spectrum... <laughs> he came to like he had stock in the company. Bro. No, 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 no. That's not true. Who? If, if the employee is a little bit in the spectrum, that motherfucker I'll tell you this. Knows. Buddy, the, the good thing you said is exactly that's true. I would 100% rather have an uh, autistic person helping me out because they are so on the shit. Even though they may not be able to take social cues a little bit, I don't give a fuck, dude. This guy's going to know the ins and outs of what the goddamn wire is made out of. And I yeah. prefer that than some fucking guy who's taking a wild guess and can't wait to get off to go play video games. Just just hire the, you know, uh, different types of people, dude. You can tell right away at the job interview. But then I feel like at those type of places, you can't hire. Because if someone has a skill set that gives a fuck, they're not going to work there. Yeah, no. I think that's just a job you just get. You're like, oh, fuck it, whatever, I'll do it. You oh, know? for sure, dude. And it's like. They're not commission based, so why would they give a fuck to make a sell? They right? They don't care to make a sale. They're like, oh, okay, whatever. I'll just fucking give this guy the runaround. Aisle fourteen. That guy didn't even work there, and he gave me a fucking better directions than somebody that worked there. Nobody's good at their job anymore. P people rarely know the answer to a question that you ask about their fucking thing. It's like, let me ask this other guy. Yeah, no. You know what? The only people that are really good is again Trader Joe's. Oh my hey. They are hands down. Trader Joe's employees are the most on it people. I don't know how they hire like in and out 
I'll give you this. In and out, Trader Joe's and in and out's a sore subject for JR. He was supposed to be a manager there. He remember he told me that if you go back a few podcasts on a trip to I forget where we were going, he broke down to me and told me that he was supposed to be a general manager of the fucking In and Out. <laughs> that was his destiny. And so that's a sore subject. But In and Out and Trader Joe's has the best employees on the planet. They're most knowledgeable. These guys will go get you shit. They're the one only store left that you can say, hey, do you guys have this in the back? And they go, hey, let me check. With a fucking smile on his face, he'll say, let me check. Yeah. And his little Hawaiian shirt, and he'll go back in the back, and guess who's bringing you a bag of jalapenos? <laughs> fucking Carlos. Oh, bro. He knows where they're at, dude. And they know everything. They're, they're, they're friendly. I don't know how much they get. They must get paid a oh, lot more. they get more. paid well. See, that's they what it is, dude. Well. If you're a CEO of a company, if you take care of the employees, they're going to just provide such better customer service, I feel like. And then you got long-term employees. Craig oh. Conant. What the fuck? That was there 10 years. Craig was there, and he was still pissed <laughs> that they let him go because he farted on his fucking manager's head. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, dude, he's the perfect example because he's like kind of like, all right, he's a little space cadet, but hey, man, he'll fucking know where the pumelos are. Yeah, dude, I was at Home Depot the other day oh, getting something, cool. and Home Depot is a fucking free for all, dude. Even the person in his own section doesn't know fucking shit, you know? He's like, yeah, yeah, all, all those will work. Anything you ask him, those will work. <laughs> hey, is this nail for fucking concrete? Yeah, yeah, those will work. Wood nails, it says on the fucking thing. It says they'll work for concrete. But I'll tell you this, Trader Joe's, they do a sneaky thing. It's not sneaky. I like it, but it leads me to get a bunch of shit that I wasn't intending on getting. Okay. They'll be like, uh, they'll make conversation with you. They're like the one of the last of yeah. the breed to make conversation last with you the at, at the checkout. How's your day going? And you can tell when it's forced, right? But I still... Yeah, but you still go, hey, man, good. What are you planning on doing? <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll, I'm not in the mood. You know, it's like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> and some other times I'm like, oh, man, it's great, dude. What about, what do you got planned tonight? Yeah. And then they were working. I go, why the fuck? <laughs> why are we doing this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Working. working, yeah. I get off so I like that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but they'll do this thing. Trader Joe's employees, they'll do this thing where they'll, like, recommend something. You know, they'll be like, well, have you tried the bow, whatever? And if they say, have you tried it? I got to try it. It's just like, oh, okay. They're not going to give me a bad suggestion. Everything at Trader Joe's is fucking good. Trader Joe's has good snacks. They got good, like, treats and shit, like little candies that they don't have everywhere else. Bomb. It's the best. You want to know a little trick? Because I know Trader Joe's employees. Yeah. So they tell them, whatever item you like, that's the item you suggest. Uh Uh-huh. So they're not... Here's the thing. They're not being disingenuous with the item they're selling because every person has a different item. I got you. That makes sense. So that's why it comes off. Sometimes you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. You try that bacon? Yeah. It's good. It's like going camping. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you're like, oh, okay. And then you try it. And then you're fucking hooked on it. Now I got to get that every time. (laughs) And the guy sees you. They always remember. Do you like the bacon? Is this a Sebastian bit? Did you like the bacon? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty got, good. Dude, my like, comedy is becoming Sebastian stuff. This is, <laughs> welcome back to the Sebastian podcast. Are you kidding? I, I, am I funny anymore? I haven't been on stage in a year. Fuck. Chuck lock. I haven't been on stage in one year. And dude, is it coming back, man? Enough's enough. I don't know if I'm funny anymore, dude. I got a show tomorrow. Jam in a van. It's outside. I don't even know what to say. I could get you on a show at a park. You can. I know you can. (laughs) This kid's been pitching me shows for for fucking months, dude. (laughs) Getting booed by a fucking homeless guy feeding pigeons, dude. I don't want to do that show. I'll (laughs) hold out. I waited one year to get back on stage. I'm not going to go fucking sell out now. You want to do a Zoom show? It's a Zoom show. What are you guys tell you the so? Dude, I did a Zoom show and a dude was laying on his stomach with his feet dangling watching the show. I was like, what, what are you doing? Fuck? What are you dangling your feet? Dude, Zoom is the most disrespectful form of comedy, dude. <laughs> They're like looking into the people's, you know, looking into their houses and shit. You're like, oh, fuck.
I was talking to Lisa, my friend Lisa, and she uh, she got pulled over, and she was telling me about it. She goes, yeah, I got pulled over, and I, she's like, I did the total chick thing, you know, where I was like, you know, officer, I'm so sorry. There was, like, some construction worker guys in a car, and they were, like, kind of following me, so I was trying to get away from them, and I was speeding away. And he goes, well, you know, better to be safe. I, was, I got three daughters. And it's better to be safe. So, okay, you know, and uh, all right, I'm going to let you go with a warning. And she's like, oh, my God, that's great. Then he goes, now tell me where those guys are at. And let's go find them. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, she told me her voice goes, well, you just, <laughs> there's nothing worse than getting caught lying to a cop, dude. Oh, no. Because the worst. They, they're experts at getting lied to. <clears throat> they get lied to on a daily basis all the time, dude. I've done it before where I got pulled over and uh, I didn't have plates on a car. Sometimes I won't have plates on a car. It's a newer car. I won't have plates for a long time. Even after I get my plates, I don't put the plates on the car. I just, this is a stupid reason, but I think it looks cooler <laughs> without a plate and what's whatever like cool plate that I want on there as opposed to the plate. And if it's new... The cops usually don't fuck with you because they're like, oh, it's a new car. But now what California has done is put a temporary plate. So there's never, you always have a plate. Even when you buy the car at the dealership, you have a temporary plate on your car. And I won't even put in my car, I won't put a front license plate on it. I'll like, cause they have to drill holes into the bumper. So I won't do that if I can, if I got a new car. Right. So I'm driving without plates. I get pulled over. And the cop's like, hey, man, what's going on? Did you just get the car? Yeah, I've had the car for a year. It's not new anymore. You have plates. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I just got it. It's like license and whatever. And then he saw that I fucking had had the car. So I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, once you've lied to them, it's over. Once you lie to a cop, it's pretty much over. They're like, hey, dude, you're full of shit. And then they're going to do whatever they're going to do. I don't Go know ahead. if I'm high, but I remember I was in the car with you, and we got pulled over, and you said, I'm... Coming from a music video shoot? <laughs> That's so funny, dude. So JR was in the car with me one time. That's great. So I've been pulled over a few times. And it's so dumb what I do, but it's like, like I said, I don't like to have the front plate on. So if the cops want to pull you over and be a dick about it, they can, right? And it's pretty dumb to do that because it just gives them a reason to pull you over, even if, even if for nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> so we got pulled over and... <laughs> And I told, no, I told the guy, I told the guy, I said, Hey man, I, I use the car in some videos I shoot and I didn't want to have the plates. I have the plates. So I wised up because the first time I got caught, I was like, yeah, I just got the car. He's like, Oh, it says here you fucking got the car before. So what the hell is going on? Yeah. So then you'd have to, uh, you'd have to, uh, put the plates on, you know, pretty much. So I don't know. I've gone a while. I hope I don't jinx it without the plates. And it also helps for red light tickets and shit like that. You don't get a fucking ticket. They can't do it. There's no plate. You know, toll road, same thing. I do have a toll thing, but I don't have plates, and that's another reason cops will pull you over because you don't have fucking plates on your car. A lot of you guys are probably listening going, why the fuck doesn't he put plates? I don't want them. What are you doing? You don't have plates? Yeah, I don't fucking put plates. What's your business? I'm running from the law. So whatever, I told him when I was with JR, I told the cops, I go, hey, man, I used the car in a video and I don't want to have my license plate online and I just forgot to put him back. A little white lie. Get me out of a little trouble, you know? And then the guys go, all right, fine, go. And I noticed during quarantine, that's not an, enough for them to pull you over. So the cars now had no plates for two years. But the moment they catch you and you pull you over, you got to fucking put the plates on so it's, the game's over. So I've ridden this one out. Hopefully by the time my lease is up, <laughs> I will have not gotten to take it in the car. In Seattle, Steve Jobs would trade in his car every two months so you won't have to put a place on his car. If this is true, yeah. for a guy that fucking didn't want to take time out of his day to pick clothes so he wore a black turtleneck, <laughs> if what JR is saying is true, what a headache to go to the dealership every fucking two months and be like, hey man, oh, Steve's back. That wasn't him. It was his assistant. Yeah, right? Yeah, come on. Steve would go. <laughs> you think Steve would go? When you're that rich, up? he wouldn't do anything. No. Fuck. I want to talk about your sweater, bro. Oh, that's I like funny. it. 
Hey, that's okay. So Jared just said he liked my sweater. He's full of shit. No, I I do. I wouldn't wear it. You just it, told me this like... is something that your fucking abuela got you when you were a kid. No, from it was the like fucking a blanket meet. that I slept with when I was a kid. No, not... you didn't ever slept with some dope shit. Like Sarah got this for me. This is your shitting no, on Sarah's. I'm quality. not shitting on it. I said I like it. But you didn't let me finish. She got it at a swap meet that your abuela shop. <laughs> exactly. <at. laughs> dude, so you got to stop buying Sarah. If you're watching this shit, stop buying stuff on the fucking Instagram, dude. <laughs> It's like made out of a wetsuit. I like it. I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying, baby, sometimes they're not fucking what you think it is. <laughs> She'll get the fucking sweater and it'll come and you're like, I think it's a little short. I go, yeah, it is. <laughs> she buys fucking shit from online all the time, dude. And then she, I had to tell her it looks good. She goes, look, and she bought this one jacket. It was so big. I can't tell her it's big, but I guess she's finding out now. <laughs> the jacket was big. It was too big. And he bought it and she's like, no, I'll email them. I'm like, dude, it's some company out of a container ship in China, dude. It's not like yeah. these fucking Instagram companies are changing every week. One week it's a massager, the next week they sell highlighters. You guys yeah. stop buying. You like the sweater? <clears throat> I do. I mean, I it is what I'm it not, is. I'm not talking shit. I, I, like, I like I can't tell if I like it or not yet. But it's starting to get a little saggy. Oh no, you're I mean, I feel like it's going to give you a rash. No, it's a I, rash guard. It's a rash guard? I don't know. I made that up. I like the design, though. It's a little, uh, like, a lion with a little fucking tree with a sunset behind it or something. Today, I taught you guys how to make pour-over coffee. You guys comment what your favorite recipe is for coffee. Do you like the French press? Do you like the little fucking Nest Cup whatever? Do you like the little press ones? Do you like the, what other ways can you make coffee? Do you grind your own beans? You know who grinds my beans? Fucking JR Daily. Grinds my gears and my beans. Dude, roasts my cherries all the time. <laughs> Grills my bacon. <sighs> this fucking guy, man. He told me to buy XRP. Bro. Ripple. Dude, the one fucking cryptocurrency that's being investigated. <laughs> Two weeks before they were investigated, guess who decided? He goes, dude, buy this shit, man. I fucking going up. Ripple, XRP, it's the new Bitcoin. I buy it, immediately drops. As is my luck. You didn't even wait for the explanation. You just, I just said, hey, I'm going to buy it. I was looking for it, inside trading. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> Do you ever do this? When I drive by a certain place that I know something happened, I'll always have to tell the person, yeah. like, about it. You know, like, oh, this is where Biggie got shot. Yeah, I have to that there's an intersection. It's it's Wilshire and Fairfax in Los Angeles and it's where Biggie was murdered mm -hmm. and no matter what and he was like leaving an award show or something and he got killed right there. No matter what, whoever I'm with, I have to say Biggie got shot there. Even when, sometimes I'm by myself. I just say it to myself. I go, Biggie got shot. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I don't know why, but in my brain, I'm o I always think that. And I have to tell the person I'm with every single time. And I probably told Sarah every time to where the last time we pull up and she goes, you know, Biggie was shot right there. <laughs>